Hi everyone, this is Professor Raymond, and I'm explaining to you how to go through the process of extrapolating using the expected peak flow charts in lab. Um, what you see up here on the screen is the chart for females. Um, there's also the chart for males. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do this example based on the chart for females because the numbers will be a little bit different than the chart for males. Uh, in lab, I went over how to do it using the chart for males uh, with the same basic um, idea here. Uh, we've got a 54-year-old person uh, who is female who is 5 feet 9 inches tall. Now, 5 feet 9 inches is 69 inches, and because this um, because this chart is in centimeters, we have to convert to centimeters. So the first thing we do is take that 69 centimeters, multiply by 2.54 centimeters per inch, and we get 175.26 centimeters. We can round that to the nearest centimeter. We're really not being more accurate than the nearest centimeter when we're measuring people's height. Um, so uh, if this person is 175 centimeters tall, notice there isn't a column for 175 centimeters. Notice also, because this person is 54, we don't have a row for 54 years old. We've got a row for 50 and a row for 55. So we know that the answer is going to be somewhere in this region, but we don't know exactly where, and we use extrapolation to find out. So let me switch over here, and what I've done is just taken out the relevant part of the table, the uh, age 50 uh, values, the age 55 values, the height 165, and the height 178. Now, what we're going to have to do is actually a series of extrapolations, because we have to extrapolate for both age and height. What we're going to do is first extrapolate for age. We're going to figure out what the age 54 figures should be for both 165 centimeters and 178 centimeters. And after we do that, then we're going to extrapolate for height using our 54 age line between 165 and 178. So the basic idea here of extrapolation is we're assuming that there's a straight line relationship between the two points that we have. So you'll see on this graph I've got the uh, 466 as the liters per minute expected value of expiratory flow at age 50 when someone is 165 centimeters tall. And I've got the 455 liters per minute when someone is 55. So notice that from age 50 to age 55, we expect someone to decrease their expiratory flow from 466 all the way down to 455. And what we're assuming is that that slope is essentially constant throughout that five-year period. So when we're trying to extrapolate for age 54, we're basically just going to figure out where it would be on this graph. Now, theoretically, you could graph this out and figure it out that way, but I'm going to show you how to do it using, um, using algebra. So the total, so what we do first is calculate the slope of this line. The rise is 466 divided by 455, or 11. The run is from 55 minus 50, or 5 years. We expect that someone will decrease their expiratory flow by 11 liters per minute over 5 years' time. But what we want to know is what's going to happen, how much will it decrease over 4 years' time, because we're looking for age 54 instead of age 55. So we set up uh, 11 over 5 as our um, our slope, but what we want to know is x, in other words, how much is going to be the decrease in four years. If we set then 
uh, 11 over 5 equal to x over 4. We can then solve that by cross multiplying. 5x equals 11 times 4, or 44. If we then divide both sides by 5, we get x equals 44 divided by 5, or 8.8. .8. So the original at age 50 was 466. If we're expecting a drop of 8.8, .8, then we take 466 minus 8.8, .8 and we get 457.2. So what we're going to do is add in 457.2 as our extrapolated value for age 54 at 165 centimeters. We now need to do the same thing for 178 centimeters. So at 178 centimeters, right, we've got the um, 478 at um, age 55 and 467 at age 50, which is a difference of 11 over 5 years, and we want to know what the difference will be over 4 years. So we're doing this the same way, cross-multiplying 5x equals 11 times 4, or 44x equals 8.8. .8. And this time what we have to do is take that 8.8, .8, the expected decrease over 4 years' time, and subtract it from 478, which gives us 469.2. We can now add that into our table as our expected value for age 54, 469.2. Now what we do is extrapolate between 457.2 at 165 centimeters in height and 469.2 at 178 centimeters in height. What we really want to know is 173. Notice that with an increase in height we expect an increase in the um, expected peak flow. So what we're going to do is set this up as 469.2 minus 457.2, or 12. We're expecting a 12 liter per minute increase over this 178 minus 175, uh, 165, which is a 13 centimeter increase in height. So this is our slope now. We're expecting 12 liters per minute increase for each 13 centimeters increase in height. But what we want to know is not what 13 centimeters increase in height gives us. We want to know what 173 is going to be. So 173 minus 65 is 8 centimeters. So 8 centimeters of increase in height, how much increase will that give us? So we've got 12 over 13 uh, and setting it equal now to x, the thing we're trying to figure out, over 8 centimeters. Once again, we're expecting 12 uh, liters per minute increase for 13 centimeters of extra height. What are we going to get for 8 centimeters of extra height, which is what we have at 173? So, if we cross multiply, 13 times x equals 12 times 8, or 96, x is going to be 96 divided by 13, or 7.4. Now 7.4, remember, is the increase that we expect at 173, so we need to take that 457.2 that we had here, add 7.4, and that gives us 464.6. So 464.6 is the expected value we would get at 173 centimeters in height and 54 as the age. We're going to round that to 465 because we really can't measure this more accurately than that. So our final answer is 465 liters per minute. Thank you.